Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with Open Source Systems. Uh, today we're gonna do more VirtualBox. Uh, this is Screencast 003, a continuation of 001 and 002. Uh, today on the agenda, we are going to extend our CentOS install from 002 uh, to do two things. First, we're gonna do a snapshot and then we're gonna install the guest editions. Now, I have to warn you, I've been working with these guest editions on CentOS uh, for a couple days now and trying to figure out the easiest way to get them installed. It's not easy, but I am telling you it is worth it. So stick with me through this video. If you've never worked with Linux before, uh, I promise you'll be okay. All right, so anyways, let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is create a snapshot of our virtual machine install that we just did. Uh, the first thing I do pretty much anytime I create a virtual machine is create a vanilla snapshot so that I can always revert back to the very, very initial install state of that VM if ever I need to. Super easy in VirtualBox, all you're gonna do is go here to Snapshots, click that button. You'll see here that we have the current state of the machine, which is really just brand spanking new. Uh, to create a snapshot of that brand spanking new state, we're just gonna click on this little camera here where it says Take Snapshot. So click that. We're gonna call this Vanilla Install. And we're just gonna put a short description here. Uh, of sent OS 6.5. Okay, looks good to me. Click OK, and really that's about it. Uh, I can select this virtual, uh, this new uh, snapshot that I created, and there's a few things I can do. If ever I do want to revert back to this, I just come over here to this tab, select this, click this button, restore snapshot, and you'll be back on track. You'll be good to go. Now remember, your virtual machine does have to be powered off in order to do this. So just make sure to power off that machine before you try to restore that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and select our current state now. We're gonna go back to the details tab. I'm gonna start up our VM by selecting it and click the start button. We're gonna let it boot up. All right, once your machine is booted up, go ahead and select your user account. Remember, click into the virtual machine, select your user account. Type the password that we use. This is not the root password. This is the user account password that we, we during the creation of the user account. We're going to log into our user account here on our virtual machine. You notice that we often get these little pop-ups here. I'm going to sit. I'm going to hit the left command key. I'm going to close these out because these are just kind of annoying. All right, get those out of there. Click back into my virtual machine. Okay, you'll notice. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this real quick. I'm going to eject this. Uh, this is what you should see now when you're when you're booted into your brand new uh, install. What we're going to do is we're going to install the guest editions. To do that, we have to insert a virtual CD. We're going to do that by going to Devices here at the top. Again, clicking the left command key. Go to Devices, and we're going to select Insert Guest Editions CD Image. What this does is this virtually puts a, a CD into our virtual machine. So this is all virtual stuff we're doing. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to click cancel because we don't necessarily want to run anything quite yet. Okay, so the next step is actually a little painful. Uh, we're going to start off by going to applications here, system tools, and then we're going to open up our terminal. Okay, a lot of you may not have experience with Linux yet or have ever run commands on a command, like, command line like this. It might seem a little intimidating, but trust me, it is not that bad. Okay, so... On the CentOS webpage, they do talk about setting up uh, essentially the, the guest editions for VirtualBox. Uh, I'm gonna take the directions directly from that webpage and, and display them for you here. Again, I apologize that this is gonna be uh, a little tough for people who are not used to this, but we'll get through it. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to get into our root account. So we're gonna SU and hit the enter key. Now we're gonna type the password we used when we set up our root account during the install. So you notice now I have root and I, I and my uh, command line has changed to this little pound sign. If you see this pound sign, you know you're good. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to update all of our packages and in order to, oh, before we can do that actually, we have to make sure we have internet connections. So let's ping google.com. Uh, you'll notice that it doesn't work. So we're going to use the dh client command. Just type dh client, hit the enter key. That's going to get us an IP address set up from the router. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to 
uh, update our system. Do yum update dash y. The dash y will just say yes so that we don't have to say yes to all this. Okay, for you it's gonna take a few minutes. I'm gonna fast forward this. All right, awesome. Okay, now that that's done, uh, you should be all up to date. Let's go ahead and just hit the up arrow on your keyboard. If you run the same command again, you should see that all of your packages are now up to date. So pretty much what we just did is we just applied an update to our system uh, and updated all the packages there. So that's a good thing because updates come with security patches. Uh, you know, we wanna keep our system up to date. All right, so the next part is gonna be a little tricky. Uh, but like I said, again, trust me, you wanna get through this. We'll just get through this together. What I had, what I went ahead and did was uh, went through these steps several, several times, tried to compile them in the most easy to do, easy to follow, and easy to understand. The problem is, is that we're missing some packages that we can't install from the base repositories that are already installed with our CentOS box. So what we have to do is we have to first grab a separate repository, verify it, install that repository, then install some of the magic packages that are going to then allow us to install uh, the guest editions. Now, I know that sounds like a lot. Welcome to the wonderful world of Linux, a world of dependencies. So let's go and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run a program called wget, okay? So say wget, it'll say, well, what do you want me to get? This goes ahead and grabs uh, things from the internet for us. So we're gonna wget, and I'm gonna type this out really slow because it's a lot of stuff, HTTP, all lowercase, colon, forward slash, forward slash, pkgs dot repo forge dot org, okay? Slash rpm forge dash release, okay? Dash rpm forge dash release dash zero dot five dot three dash one dot el six dot rf almost done dot x eight six underscore sixty four dot rpm okay whew, i hope you guys got all that <clears throat> now hit the enter key what that does is that goes and that grabs that file for us now if you notice here if I look into our directory, you notice that our file is now downloaded. Okay, so we got this crazy file, random file from the internet. What we need to do is we need to make sure that this file is what we think it is. So first we have to import a key. So to do that, we're gonna use the RPM package tool and we're gonna say import. And we're again gra gonna grab this key from the internet, HTTP forward slash, colon forward slash forward slash apt.sw.be slash all caps, RPM dash GPG dash K E Y. Okay, now lowercase dot D A G dot T X T. Okay, so this goes, grabs a key from the internet, one that we inherently trust because CentOS is telling us to. Uh, now that this key is installed, we want to verify the package, the RPM Forge package that we downloaded. To do that, we're going to do RPM dash capital K RPM Forge. But you know what? Since we already downloaded it, we can just do RPM F and then hit the tab key. And that'll tab out everything there for you, okay? One nice little feature of uh, Linux there. Okay, so you'll notice here that it went ahead and tested it and it looks to be okay. So that's good news for us. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to install this uh, repository into our, into our repo package. Uh, so to do that, we're going to do RPM dash I, and then we're going to do RPM F, and then tab that puppy out again. That's going to install that repository for us. Okay. So now this repository is installed. Okay. That's that was one of the harder aspects of this. So the next thing that we're going to have to do is actually install some of the necessary packages that we need to now build and uh, yeah, to essentially build the guest editions. So we're gonna do that next. To do that, we're going to use yum, which is our package installer, which we used before to update everything. 
We're going to do dash dash and we're going to enable the new repository that we just installed. So enable repo, RPM forge, and then we're going to install DKMS, which is a necessary package in RPM forge that we needed. Okay, so go ahead and hit that. Now what it'll do is it'll install this nice package that is not included in our base packages. DKMS is not included in the base ones, which is why we're having to use RPM Forge. Hit Y for yes. And it's gonna go ahead and go through the install package for DKMS, it'll take just a few seconds. All right, so far so good, okay. The next thing we have to do is now that DKMS is installed, we have to install the tools that are gonna to allow us to build the guest editions. Again, we're gonna use yum. This time we're gonna say group install. And in quotes, we're gonna say development space tools. Again, this is being pulled directly from the uh, CentOS website. Hit Y for yes to go ahead and install that. Okay, so we're installing 45 different packages here. This is gonna take just a few minutes. All right, one more step of installations. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do, and I actually think I saw this already installed, so we might, it might tell us that this is already installed, but we're gonna install kernel devel one more time just because CentOS is telling me to. So if we do yum install uh, kernel devel, oops. What this does is this installs the uh, the development packages for the kernel so that so that uh, VirtualBox is able to build the guest editions as a kernel module. Okay, so do yum install kernel devel, hit the enter key. And my guess is that's gonna tell us that it is already installed in the latest version, which it is, okay, great. All right, so the next thing on the, on the agenda is just one more step, uh, and that is, we need to do a fix that so that we are able to build the OpenGL packages. Otherwise, those are going to exit out, or error out for us during the build process. To do that, we're going to, we need to change directories first. We're going to go cd space and then dash user dash src dash kernels dash. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tab out. That way I don't have to type all that out. But you can see from my path, it looks like this. Yours may be, may be different depending on the version of the kernel that you're running. Uh, but this is what it is for me. So that's why I went ahead and, and hit the tab key to just go ahead and do that. Uh, now I'm going to do include. Again, tab that out. And then DRM, tab that out again. Okay. So now what I have to do is I have to create what's called four symbolic links here. Now to create a, symb a symbolic link, you're going to use ln command. So type ln space dash s and then you're going to do dash user include drm drm dot h and then space drm dot h so we're taking that file we're creating a symbolic link called drmh here in our current directory okay that's one of four again we're going to do the same thing ln dash s user include DRM, and then this time we're going to do DRM underscore S A R E A dot H. So DRM underscore S area, and then we're again we're going to call this DRM underscore S area dot H. Two more. This one is user include DRM DRM underscore mode dot H, and we're going to call it DRM underscore mode dot H. And last one, ln-s, user, include, drm, drm, underscore, for, cc.h, and then we're going to call it drm, underscore, for, cc.h. Whew, okay, now, we should have everything ready to go ahead and build and install our guest additions into our VM. So now everything is established, we should be able to update our kernel, no problem, run updates in the future, and we'll always have these guest editions installed on our virtual machine. Now, to install these guest editions I was talking about earlier, we're gonna go to cd slash media slash type capital VB and go ahead and hit the tab key and that's gonna tab out the VirtualBox CD 
that was uh, virtually inserted into your computer. Okay, so you're going to notice if you ls here, you have several uh, programs. The one that we're going to run is called VBox Linux Editions. To run that, we're going to, the installer, we're going to hit dot forward slash v b lowercase o x capital L and go ahead and hit the tab key again to tab that out. Hit the enter key. And that should go ahead and run through the build and installation process. Oh, looks like we have an error. Okay, so this error was actually unexpected on my part, but we'll go ahead and deal with it. Uh, we need to install the kernel develop package. There's a specific one apparently that we need to install. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this with my mouse and I'm gonna right, cop, right click copy now you can do this with your touchpad if you're on a Mac. It'll just act kind of weird because if you hit the command key to do a, a copy, it'll take you out of the VM. Uh, and then now we're gonna do yum install dash Y for yes. And we're gonna right click in there and do paste. And that should install the kernel development package for us. This will take just a few minutes. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and run the installer again. Dot forward slash VB OX capital L Linux. Hit the enter key. Fantastic. Okay, you notice that it does say that our open uh, GL support module had failed. I was hoping that that would actually work. Uh, not quite sure why that failed. But, uh, you know, we'll just let that one slide for now. Uh, I may do a follow-up uh, follow screencast later on to, to see what went on there. But what you notice is now that we installed that, we should be able to wave our mouse across. And I don't have to hit the command key anymore to get out of there. So now we have mouse pointer integration with our, with our virtual machine. So that's really nice. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just quickly reboot the system to make sure everything installed okay. And, oh, we're going to exit out of this and to show you another really neat feature of this. So let's go ahead and shut down and just restart this real quick. Okay, excellent. So go ahead and log into your account here. All right, let's go ahead and just double check, make sure our guest editions are working. So right now you can see that I'm able to select things in my virtual machine and I do not have to click the command key to exit out. Now you notice that my mouse doesn't even go in my virtual machine anymore. So I can go from one to the other smoothly. So really, really good sign. Let me show you really another neat uh, aspect of this is, oh, another thing I forgot to mention too, I can actually take text now from my host machine and actually copy and paste into my virtual machine. So that's super, uh, super handy uh, as you continue to work with your virtual machine. Another thing is, is I can actually go into full screen mode because now uh, when I readjust the screen size, it'll actually readjust the resolution in my virtual machine. Let me show you what that looks like. If I readjust this here, you notice that my resolution in my VM actually gets updated semi real time. So that's really neat. Uh, and in order to go full resolution or full screen with this, we're going to go to view, switch to full screen. And you'll notice now that I'm running a full screen and now my Macintosh looks like I'm running a Linux system. Uh, it would work the same with Windows as well. To get out of it, we're going to go down here, scroll all the way to the bottom and kind of hover here at the bottom. Select this to get out of full screen mode. But there you have it, a fully functional, ready to go, ready to rock CentOS VM. It's going to be part of your arsenal as we continue moving, uh, moving along with these screencasts. We're going to be doing a lot of things with this VM, so it's very important that you essentially get to this point. And I know if you've never done Linux before, it's kind of hard. I'll go ahead and put all of these notes on the website with this screencast so that you have the text available for you. You can reference it or feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Uh, one last thing, go ahead and right click, eject your virtual CD there, and you should be good to go. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Again, feel free to uh, join our open community for free. Uh, join us on there. Reach out with any questions. We're happy to help. Thank you. Hey, guys. Just one last thing, actually, before I let you go. Um, I forgot to mention, 
after you do all this work, I know you probably don't want to lose this. Uh, like, uh, sure, no, I don't. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and shut down your virtual machine. So click system, shut down, and just shut the whole thing down. We're going to let it exit appropriately. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a snapshot. We are going to take yet another snapshot. So we're going to have two snapshots. And I just want to show you how that works just to make sure that we don't forget. Okay, so once we get back here, if you're on your details pane, just go ahead and click over to your snapshots pane real quick. Our current state right now of our virtual machine is the guest edition, the guest editions install that we just did. So all that work we did is the current state. We want to take a snapshot of this so we don't lose it. So let's go ahead and click this take snapshot. And we're going to say guest additions install. Installed guest additions. There. Really, that's it. So now we have two snapshots. We have a guest editions install and we have a vanilla install. I can revert my machine back to either one of these states at my will. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's great. So I just want to make sure we don't forget that. Go ahead and just do a quick snapshot and that'll save you some heartache. Thank you.